Here are the latest updates on the PNA Newsroom. President Ferdinand R. Marcos witnessed the contract signing of the Metro Manila subway project, the first underground railway system in the country. The signing of contracts was held in a ceremony at the President's Hall in Malacanang Pala. The President signed the Contract Package 1024 Quezon Avenue Station and Contract Package 103 for the Anonas and Camp Aguinaldo Stations. These are just two of the seven civil work contracts for the underground rail project that will have a total length of 33 kilometers. A total of 17 stations will be running from Valenzuela City to the FTI Bikutan in Parañaque with a line to the Nino Aquino International Airport Terminal 3 in Pasay City. Once fully operational, the Metro Manila subway can accommodate around 519,000 passengers per day and will significantly reduce travel time between Quezon City to Naiya from 1.5 hours to 35 minutes. The Metro Manila subway project was funded by the Japan International Cooperation Agency or JICA and is expected to generate more than 18,000 jobs during its construction. It is said to be the fulfillment of the administration's agenda to provide an efficient mass transport system in the country. We hope to reduce the terrible sight of, watching, of going home at midnight along EDSA and still seeing people waiting to take the bus. That is the advantage of what the subway will bring. They know that they can always go to the subway station and there will be a train coming along in a few minutes. The Department of Justice assured that the Marcos administration will continue to vigorously pursue all incidents of attacks on journalists. DOJ spokesman Jose Dominic Lavano IV made the assurance following the release of the country's supposed ranking in terms of newspersons' safety by a private New York-based organization. Clavano said this index will not stop the new administration from investigating and prosecuting work-related killing and harassment of journalists. He adds that the DOJ understands the importance of good journalism and will take concrete steps in protecting those that simply want to keep the government and its officials in check. The country ranks 7th among the top 10 countries with 14 slain journalists based on the 2022 Global Impunity Index by the Committee to Protect Journalists or CPJ. On top of the most unsafe countries for journalists is Somalia followed by Syria, South Sudan, Afghanistan, Iraq, and Mexico. The Office of the Press Secretary has joined the annual tree planting program organized by water concessioner Mainila. The OPS shared on Facebook several photos of the Plant for Life tree planting activity on October 28 at the Ipo watershed in Norzagaray, Bulacan. The project aims to plant 1 million trees along Ipo Dam. The OPS said the agency's participation was in line with the directive of President Ferdinand R. Marcos to work on mitigating the impact of climate change on the country, as well as solve the lack of power and water supply. On Tuesday, Marcos emphasized the need to include tree planting activities in flood control projects, citing the damage caused by severe tropical storm Paeng in Maguindanao. Since the program's inception in 2007, Maynila has planted over 975,000 indigenous trees and mangroves covering a land area of around 704 hectares. In sports, the Philippines has won the second Intercontinental Online Chess Championship for prisoners in the men's category. The General Santos City Jail Male Dormitory Chess Team defeated Team Columbia to dominate the event. In a statement, the Department of Foreign Affairs said the team was trained by some of the country's chess masters, including Winston Silva, Shireha Anpodar, and Cedric Cabangal. It is the country's second time to join the event since it was launched last year. Mongolia was meanwhile declared the champion in the female category. 
More than 85 teams composed of inmates from 46 countries took part in the online event via chess.com. The event from October 13 to 14 was organized by the Cook County Department of Corrections and the International Chess Federation or FIDE in observance of the International Day of Education in Prisons. And that's the latest and the biggest stories from the PNA Newsroom. For more news content, visit our webpage or head on to the Philippine News Agency's Facebook and Twitter accounts. We are also shown on the social media pages of the Office of the Press Secretary and Radio Filipinas RP1. Stay tuned for more news update. I'm Marita Muahe. We tell stories that inspire change.